Hey everybody, uh, hope that you guys are having a good week up until this point. Uh, here we are, another segment of Riding with Rick, uh, more down to earth, less technical version of some of the other stuff that you'll find on this channel, but yet still relevant, still powerful, still necessary. Uh, you know the routine, if you like what you hear, uh, click the like button. Uh, if it's something that you feel will bring you back, click the subscribe and the share button and all that good stuff. If you are a subscriber or you are a follower, or if you've been around long enough to know what I do and you believe in it, we need your support. Show your support and donate. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and with all that out of the way, uh, here we are again. While we are sitting around and literally moving through life as if we're in first place, uh, as if we are not at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder, as if we aren't being outpaced in the uh, racial uh, wealth pursuit where the wealth gap is widening. Uh, while we do that, our boys are under assault. And don't get me wrong, this is not one of them things to trigger or to point fingers at any other play person in the group or any other gender. This is an attack on women. I'm just talking specifically about our boys right now. Our girls are dealing with their own issues. And I'm going to talk about all of this stuff over the uh, remainder of this year. Um, I've written about it extensively in my books. I've written about it in academic papers. I've brought it to the forefront. I've put thousands of tens upon tens upon tens of thousands of hours of research in to come up with solutions to talk about ways that we can change this but it has to be applied it has to be implemented i had a meeting uh, a couple of days ago on this the problem isn't that we don't have the solutions the problem is we can't unify we can't galvanize we can't come together and here's what's happening right now they are targeting our young black boys in a way that you haven't imagined. Yeah, we know about the music and the the violence and the and the uh, dope game and the and the, and all of that stuff and how, how that's playing out the school to prison pipeline. But they are literally uh, attacking the black male energy image. They are. Uh, extracting the entire notion of masculinity from the black male image one uh, ounce at a time and now there's a narrative being pushed in classrooms not just in the US but around the world when I first wrote this article uh, it was something being pushed in the UK but it had uh, expanded its branches so to speak off into the uh, US and now it's picking up steam and that is they are pushing the narrative that boys have periods too now I wrote an article in this uh, in the description box you're gonna find the article so you can go read the article but I wrote an article addressing the whole biological concept of a cycle uh, what, what we normally call a period for a girl is not just a mood swing. It's not just bleeding from your reproductive organ. It is so much more that is directly associated with uh, the f uh, physical constructs of being a female. And this is being pushed. Why? This is being pushed. And no, it's not just isolated to the black community, but the black community is least likely to able to absorb the hit and the impact. What you have to understand is the gay, the gay agenda, and this is more than a gay agenda I want to make, by the way. This is a, this is a racial and classism agenda. One of the ways that you neutralize a people is you neutralize their capacity to reproduce. One of the most effective ways to do that is to put them in situations where they cannot reproduce. One of the most passive ways is to convince them, hey, that they're making the choice and they're doing it on their own. It's a cool thing to do. This agenda started way back in the early 70s with the NSSM, which was a council put together to discuss population control. Uh, if you don't believe me, Google to NSSM 200 and take it from there. But uh, what I can tell you is there's an agenda. That has an agenda. It is right around the same time that the NSSM uh, was published, which is, you, you, you look it up, you'll read it. It was a council on uh, 
population control, certain target, certain countries, certain ethnic groups targeted, bunch of stuff. Check it out, research it. Don't get the sanitized version, find the original version. But then almost simultaneously, that was pressure being applied to the group of psychologists and psychiatrists who determine uh, what's going to be inside the DSM, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Up until the DSM-3, if I'm not mistaken, the DSM-3, the, uh, the uh, uh, excuse me, the DSM, DSM-2, DSM-3. Anyway, up until 71, 72, the DSM had homosexuality listen, listed as a mental disorder. Uh, at that point, it was taken out of the DSM, and I'm not here to argue whether it should be in or be out. I'm just talking about what happened right around the same time this was going on. Okay, so then right, right at that time, it was taken out, and a statement was issued by those psychologists and psychiatrists who have a uh, influence on what goes in, what stays out, what's considered to be a mental disorder, what's not. They said that the removal of it does not in any way constitute their concession that uh, homosexuality is biologically influenced. And I'm going to leave that at that. Because this isn't what this argument is about. It's not even about homosexuality. It's about the feminization of the black male image. But I'm going to show you how it's all playing into it. We are sitting around and we are too lethargic. We are too lackadaisical. We, you can swear we are the people with the privilege. We are the people with the power. We are the, we're sitting around, we're riding around in our Mercedes that costs way more than we should be paying for it based on our median income. But we outbuy them two to one in Mercedes every year. And the wealth gap is what? 12, 13 to one? Think about that. Uh, the average millionaire in America drives a Toyota uh, Camry. But when you don't have power, you search for the symbols of power. And we constantly do that. And we're constantly being convinced that we can have power and be accepted and be acknowledged with things. So that there's that part. But back to this thing with this. So I, I, I updated this article to really, truly nail down what's going on here. But what we cannot do is what we have been doing, and that's sitting around and acting and pretending like nothing's wrong. And the truth of the matter is, we are going to have to come to the forefront. We're going to have to stand in the gap. We're going to have to wage war. We're going to have to be responsible for what's being pushed on our kids. We're going to have to consider alternate uh, means and uh, methods of education. We're going to have to consider a lot of things that we simply don't seem prepared or ready or willing to do. And we talk about black empowerment as if it's some undeniable fact when the truth of the matter is it's only undeniable if we pursue it, if we go after it, if we actually go and get it and take it and seize it. Those are the ways that you come in and you say, I am going to create power for my family. I'm going to go out and get it. I'm going to make sure that my children are insulated and protected. I'm going to go out and make sure that they are properly educated, empowered, and prepared. I'm going to go out and make sure that there is adequate uh, support and protection so that they are not in a place where they aren't protected. But more importantly, I'm not going to allow their minds to be poisoned by things that can have a negative impact on them. This has absolutely nothing to do with my stance. And everybody knows my stance on homosexuality, but I love all of my people. I love them regardless of where they're at in this world. But my thing is, if you ask me, I'm going to give you what my expertise presents. And it's always going to be based on what do I think is best for the community. It's this is we can no longer have this mindset of it's not my business. Uh, 
do whatever you want to do type mentality and think we can create power create power co collective power is a social dynamic meaning that there have to be codes there has to be behavioral standards there has to be an understanding of how we're going to move and the biggest part of my problem is we know scientifically that if we leave these kids alone stop pushing our agendas heterosexual or homosexual, transgender, whatever, if we stop pushing on the kids, 85% of them will uh, basically do what natural order does, identify with their natural uh, assignment at birth. And another 7 to 8% will venture off but come back to it. So nature has a way of correcting what doesn't go right or go wrong for whatever the reasons for it happening. And because uh, again, that's not the argument here. But what we do, if we push it on them, if we program them, it becomes a new norm. It becomes now a new presentation and expectation. And now the natural order is warped. And it's our responsibility to give our ch kids the best chance. And what I can tell you is, a people without a masculine presence, a predominant masculine presence that has a clear understanding of its responsibility to the collective cannot stand. If you want to destroy our people, destroy the men. If you want to destroy our people, confuse the men. If you want to destroy our people, make men become so disconnected with who they are and what they're supposed to be doing that it doesn't even resemble what it used to be. And the rest is history. So it's our responsibility to protect that. It's our responsibility to restore that. It's our responsibility to stand up. So again, uh, if you want to read the article, the link is in the description box. If you want to support the work we're doing so that we keep this going with organizations like Black Men that focuses so heavily on restoring the Black identity, Black male identity, uh, racially socializing young Black males, and so much more. If you want to be a part of that, show your love, show your support, and donate if you like what you've heard click the like button keep it moving i absolutely appreciate it. i love every last one of you guys um, i've been doing this for years i've been consistent in what i do and i will continue to do so uh keep me lifted keep me uh prayed up and i will do the same for you on that note i'm out take care